Hello, friends. Today I'm talking to Mr. Mansoor Khan. Uh, I don't think anyone who has grown up in the 90s of India wouldn't would have missed watching some of his iconic movies like Jo Jita Wahi Sikandar and Kayamat Se Kayamat Tak. But today, Mr. Mansoor Khan lives in uh, in in wildness, like some somewhere in Kunur, right? He lives there, and um, and he has written a book called The One, which is essentially 20 years of his thought and research and work around a very beautiful concept, which I would like him to introduce and talk more about. Uh, but this book here, it talks about two people who the world think are, uh, let's say, totally demented and do not know what they're doing. But uh, the whole process of the story actually tells us uh, how relevant or how significant the points uh, that are uh, these characters are really driving or really striving for are. So without any more delay, Mansoor Khan, Mr. Mansoor Khan, thank you so much for joining. And let's talk about one, the story of ultimate myth. Great. Thanks, Pri uh, Priyanka, because very few people let me speak about this subject. <laughs> this is something which is, which is uh, uh, you know, um, somehow we have been culturally conditioned not to think like this, you know. Mm. So it's not a, uh, my book is not a moral blame game. I don't believe that anything that's happening is you can blame it on X, Y, Z, capitalism, so-and-so, America, la, la. That, those, those are our favorite scapegoats, you know. So my book is really about, uh, this is my second book, incident, and it was not going to be a fiction. It was actually, I was writing it as a non-fiction, because actually the thought is uh, non-fiction. Mm. It's a thought, but it's not a, just a thought. It's I would not call it a concept. I'm saying I'm talking about reality. Yeah. So the real core subject of the book is reality. And so how do you perceive reality? How do you, what do you think reality is? How do you understand it? How do you deal with it? Results in what will be the outcome? So really it all circles around the, on the word reality. Okay. So uh, I'd like to make a small correction. You introduced the book as the one. Sorry. Actually it's one. one. Yeah, because when you say the one, it actually <laughs> completely contradicts. It uh, One is, um, the one makes it sound like a singular thing, you know? Yes. Whereas one means interconnected. True. Yeah, it was hard and for me to is, complete the sentence without that pronoun, I believe, without using yeah, the I know, I know. I, But I, yes. I've noticed people do that, yeah. So one is, uh, actually, it's, it's, it's really Advait. Mm. Because everything is interconnected. Correct. While civilization wrote Adwait 3,000 years back, um, we I'm able to interpret it 3,000 years later. I don't know. I'm just using the uh, time span of 3,000. I don't know how many thousand years ago. But uh, we are in a better position to uh, evaluate what happens if you don't follow Advait. In other words, if you don't follow reality as interconnected and one, and you do, uh, you make seg segments of reality, and that is Dwight. And which is why we have got this whole paradox of duality. You know, good, bad, in, out. You know, fast, small, strong, weak. And our whole culture, so really speaking, after reality comes the word culture, which uh, your listeners have to understand. And the main thing that I want to get across, and I'll ask your readers, I mean, your viewers this question. Who do you think is destroying the planet? Okay? And I don't give more than 10 seconds for anyone to answer. Because they won't need 10 seconds. They'll say, humans. That's totally wrong. That is the biggest, biggest lie that has been propagated across the planet. Whether it, they, it be by scientists, experts, anthropologists, ecologists, environmentalists, statesmen, you name it. Historic, historians. How can you say humans when there are 5,000 cultures I can point out? Are Adivasis causing the collapse? 
the Native Americans, the Pygmies, the Eskimos, the Yanomami, the Baki, the San. You know, so we don't understand the difference between species and culture. Mm. And human species has got 5,000 cultures. And these are the remaining 5,000 cultures. Actually, humans were about probably, I don't know how many, 500,000 cultures before this ridiculous culture came 10,000 years back, which is called civilization. So my book is really a critique, not only a critique, but a... So I, I first of all, say it's not humans that is killing the planet. You can see it. Just go to any... Yeah, tribal village, go. Their, their forest are surviving. Their river water is clean. Their birds are thriving. Then how are you telling this biggest lie? So it's not humans. It is a culture called civilization. And what is a culture is another thing that people don't understand. We think culture is art, literature, poetry, music, you know, painting. That's not culture. And we think that only humans have culture. That's not true. Culture is just a summation of any species' life. A frog has a culture. What a frog likes to eat are flies. You don't like to eat flies, right? So that's not in your culture. It's a, culture, again, it's a hijack word. So civilization is a, is a dominant, aggressive, deluded culture. So we have killed 95% or converted of tribal indigenous people. And we say, oh, we are advanced. Hmm. If we are so damn advanced, how come all these problems are happening because of civilization and no other? How come we have the maximum diseases? How come where we go, we leave deserts in our, in our footsteps? No indigenous culture does that. So actually my book is, that that is the center. I'm trying to give you, you know, so that otherwise, because we're living in such a um, desperate world. You know, it's called Koyana Skatsi by the Indians. Koyana Skatsi means a world out of balance. Hmm. So it's an Indian Popi term. We are living in a world which is totally out of balance. So we don't know what to do. And now, because we become environmentally conscious and water and save this and don't throw plastic and don't kill species, and that's you're only looking at the pimples. <laughs> You're looking at the effects. You're not looking at the root cause. cause. What is causing this? You know? So, so Mansur, that is what, what my book is about. What I understood that you think that civilization or this whole idea of us trying to develop ourselves or become something that we were not inherently supposed to be as species, uh, something that came out of our own whims and fancies that, you know, this is how man should be. This is how, this is why we should discover fire. This is why we should uh, do agriculture. This is why we should set up communities. So then what it, if you were to go back these many years, what do you think uh, should have been done differently? Because doesn't it look like a natural uh, consequence of intelligence, of uh, human uh, consciousness that we will always <laughs> try to better our lives in whatever really? way we can, right? This is this is another myth which has been fed into our, you know, that we try to better ourselves. I mean, God didn't know how to make this planet. <laughs> we are going to make it better. Adivasis don't have this delusion. Frogs don't have this delusion. What do you mean by better? Is your heart getting better? Is it pumping more blood every day? Is your liver producing more bile every day? A woman of your age and weight and everything... 50,000 years back, her heart would also be pumping the same amount of blood. So this notion of progress, mm. quantitative growth, mm. development, these are all myths. What do you mean by development? You 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 cut a whole ecosystem and, and make it into a into an urban thing and that's development. You mean, in other words, you're taking real capital. That's why, you know, real capital is ecology, you know. So first of all, I must clarify to you that fire, as you read in the book, fire was. So actually my book is about boundaries. Mm. You know, so how do you create a notion of a boundary? How can I say that this is Priyanka? So I put an imaginary boundary and Priyanka is a label. I know I, I, 10 other Priyankas and they are nothing like. Mm. In fact, one Priyanka I know is a cat. So, 
what does that label mean you see so we are a symbolic culture we reduce reality into symbols and we believe that our science our understanding if done through symbols is superior to the understanding of a frog or a bird how does a bird fly does it know the laws of gravity does it know bernoulli's principle how does a fish swim does it know the laws of buoyancy boyle's law how does a frog catch something like this does it know uh, third degree uh, uh, calculus so the very notion that you can understand only through symbols is a is a that is the delusion of civilization whereas indigenous cultures do not have that delusion they understand by instinct sense tradition experience traditional knowledge and that works and you don't need to know everything and this whole notion that we need to know more how much should i know what's going on in your head right now will it help me or will it help you but isn't that so this, what this, makes human beings uh... don't say human beings human beings don't do this 5000 cultures don't do this they are not obsessed with more knowledge they don't do research they don't break a leaf into chlorophyll and this thing and that thing and cytoplasm and this thing they don't but isn't this curiosity yeah, this... inherent so they uh, don't because maybe they did not they question it so much yes they don't and that's why the forests are fine and by the way there's another saying which i'm sure you know curiosity kills the cat correct ah so at the <laughs> same time you are accepting curiosity as a oh god this is a natural thing i'm very curious what goes on in in, in a one year old uh, child's uh, brain and that you know i'm experimenting on her physically because i'm curious mm. but you'll call me a pedophile mm. what do you mean by curiosity where where does curiosity end where does intrusiveness end you're not supposed to do that yeah and, and also you are doing it through a symbolic means like for instance i want to understand priyanka better so should i weigh her measure her height take the density of her flesh i don't get to know priyanka by those numbers by that symbolic method i can know priyanka only if i spend time with her if i share moments with her experientially that's how i know my wife that's how i know my sister so this civilization is a ridiculous culture that even believes that agriculture agriculture is a second sin is the original <laughs> yes so, i mean some of the ideas that you write in the book were like oh my god what do i do with this now <laughs> just because you don't know what to do with it or i don't know either it doesn't mean it makes it any less true hmm. it doesn't make it why are you going back to organic today i want to ask you was in modern civilization saying hey we found chemical and uh, agriculture that's the boom hey we found plastic so cheap so flexible so malleable so why are you cursing them now won't you the people who said 250 years ago we got fossil fuels you can move a boulder you can move a mountain why are you cursing it now because none of that which comes from boundary thinking and boundary science can be of any use so it is a much more spiritual perspective it is not a simple blame game like oh we should respect the environment there's no way you can respect the environment do you think it's some way irreversible But, everything has become very irreversible there is no going back right the, the see these are again these are again dilemmas which civilization faces you know a fish does not try to try to change the course of the river it flows with it. Mm. we have to flow with it we are saying no we won't flow with it and then you start flowing with it and everything will be all right mm. you won't have to do a thing you won't have to have these climate change devos meetings and those <laughs> uh, save energy meetings and the, the don't throw plastic meetings you have to change your perception of reality that is what the book is about and we don't believe that and that's why we talk about change good god change is the worst word but in today's wor uh, world we say oh we are going to change the are have to change the world enough when you did agriculture you violated the world food is supposed to be shared you cannot grab food that was the original original ecological energetic sin and from that 
in this in the sense of boundary Name. explain a little more this boundary concept the boundary science boundary technology this whole circle that you have yes. in your book drawn a couple so of I'll times ask, I, i'll ask you can you show me a boundary in reality maybe this room me? that i'm sitting in right this room has really? four walls okay but is it disconnected no is it, it has a house room? there are rooms below no but it's connected with the heat from the see yeah. it's not disconnected it's not disconnected correct but our science is based on the whole idea of objectivity so we create these concepts we say okay i'm going to make an object this object is called a ball and there's a tight circle around it which is imaginary and i'm going to you know so we create a concept a conceptual separation of mm. the ball from the rest of reality mm. or the or the person like if i have to understand my child do you think i have to put a boundary around the child so that the, my child is disconnected with all of reality including me and then only will i understand it but that's what all your science is about mm. it's it is a disconnected separate you know so doesn't exist otherwise why yeah you explain this with a very beautiful example in the book where you say that there is one uh, there is one guy yes please continue so everything starts from reality hmm. that's my core subject and what is the nature of reality the nature of reality and what is reality i don't know according to me reality is just everything what you know what you don't know what you can see what you can smell what you can feel everything exactly but civilization doesn't like that it really believes that it should know everything which is a which is a most ridiculous concept because you can't even know it if you're going to measure it mm. you know you know by instinct by feel so this is reality it's interconnected in one right it has no boundaries otherwise why did civilization write advai but adivasis don't need to write advai they are living in advai that is why they have no mental symbolic corruption they understand by sense of smell touch experience sight you know uh, taste all animals do so you mean to tell me 500 million uh, god how many species there are okay and 5000 cultures have operated that way and not destroyed the planet and only one ridiculous culture which calls itself king says this is the right way to deal with reality it's made of boundaries and then it writes a book called as right what a fraud culture what a demented <laughs> crazy eccentric culture so culture is culture means your mindset yeah there are two identical twin brothers one brother says women are only good for three things and you can imagine that correct and the other brother says no women are equal and equal to us identical genes identical parents identical everything what is different the mindset the mindset that is culture so culture is your perception of reality and what is our perception of reality something that the native americans could never understand when the white man went what do you mean by property what do you mean by, what do you mean by ownership who owns a river who owns a wind and today you are living in a world of copyrights i can copyright the way i say copyright and if you say it like me <laughs> i will show you <laughs> <laughs> that's how ridiculous this culture is so we are a cancer cell mm. you have the you've got so many cells in your body blood cells skin cells bone cells brain nerve cells whatever but they follow a particular law of biology finite life mm. use finite resources and stay in the same place only one kind of cell says no i i'm too good i don't agree with this bullshit i am not going to have a finite life i'm going to live forever as for bon jovi song 
How ridiculous that we have a culture that actually celebrates a song. I'm going to live forever. So that's what the cancer cell says. If it has to live forever, it has to use infinite resources. And where are they going to come from? If it was in your liver, then from your liver. And it, and again, it says, no, 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 not only that, but I'll give birth to two cells and they will live forever. And they I'll just will multiply. Give... I'll just multiply. That's exponential. And do you know what our market philosophy is? Exponential. Exponential Don't growth. Have... <laughs> yeah. So there's nothing different between civilization and a cancer cell. It's as simple as that. So I... So many levels I can show you that we are we are the curse of this culture, not the not the species. If the species was the curse, we wouldn't have survived for two million years. Mm. We would have destroyed ourselves. Now you're talking about going to Mars. Excuse me. Why? <laughs> this is a, yeah. Oh, oh, Earth is not good enough. You know. Although there are 999 trillion things correct on Earth and not even one thing correct on that stupid Correct. <laughs> so you're saying, oh no, we can't correct these things, but we'll go there and create a whole ecosystem again. Mm. That took 3.6 billion years. Look at the number of morons that believe in, I'm sorry to use his name, but I have to use it. Elon Musk. <laughs> we, are, we are a celebrity culture. We are yes. a... The, we believe in cults. We believe in profits because we have no thinking of our own. Animals don't have profits. Animals don't have cults because each each member of that tribe or each member of that uh, pack of wolves or whatever knows what it know, needs to know. Correct. It doesn't need a, a guruji. Oh, good God. Why do you need a guruji? That means there's something wrong with you. <laughs> but there are, so it's a, it's a culture thing. When you get into it, you say, "My, you know, you'll be, you'll be amusing yourself day after day after day after day when you delve in this." And that's what I. So I'm not a moral guy. I'm saying no, no, and I'm not an answer giving guy. Oh, just do this. Just do X, Y, Z. Just decrease your energy footprint. What yes, the stupid carbon footprint? Story. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know we are masters of symbolic uh, deception, and you can only deceive with symbols. You can't deceive. Money is a symbol. Do you eat a thousand rupee note or a five hundred rupee note? No, of course you don't. That five hundred rupee note represents value. And in our school, we don't even teach the difference between price and value. What's the price of your mother? What's the price of your friend? Ah, so now it starts hitting hard. But we love to say that the price of this tree is this much. We don't value it. The only so that's a symbolic culture. I picked up when you said that you are not an answer giving guy, you are not a guy who complains. Uh, so what do you think uh, this this book or this philosophy or this thought should uh, do to the people? I mean, uh, how would you want a reader to go back after reading your book? Because all I was was full of questions, confusion. <laughs> Is that the state of mind you want to re leave your readers with? Or what do you expect? See, first of all, I hate the word philosophy. The philosophy means, Phil means love. And Sophie means knowledge. This is an aberration of civilization. Love of knowledge. How much knowledge do you want? So philosophy, you know, who am I? What is the purpose of life? What is death? I mean, all nonsensical questions. My dog doesn't ask that question. It's just very happy. <laughs> <laughs> the frog living on my farm doesn't ask these stupid questions. The uh, average uh, tribal person doesn't waste his time. Thinking you know, of all asking this. Me. Yeah. So philosophy is a bad word for me. And that is the arrogance. Knowledge. Mm. Development. Progress. Intelligence. Intelligence is a narrow mode of thought. So I, as you, you read the book, Logic, I have demolished logic. I've shown you that logic is just depends on how far you're thinking. If you're only thinking within a chessboard, then your logic will tell you how oh, move this piece here because you will win. But when I look up from the chessboard and I notice I'm playing against Daud Ibrahim, then I say, oh shit, <laughs> I'm not making it. Got it? So when your framework is a chessboard, then that is the best 
But when you take your framework to your opponent, it's the worst. And if you take it a little further, I say, oh, but I know that there are 25 snipers sitting there, that the moment the, I move, make this move and the moment Dawood pulls out his gun, they're going to shoot his blast in the head off. And I'll become a hero. So when I make the boundary there, then I say, wow, I should make this. Then I take it. So that intelligence is an it's 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 an escape. It's it's a construct. It's a construct. You know? So all these words. It's a, so I anyway, coming back to your question, what do I what do you expect? want the readers to take with? Because uh... see, yeah, see if, when I say I'm not an answer giver, obviously. We love answers. That kind of, that is the kind of stupid culture we are. Okay, what's the solution? What's the solution? Yes. Oh, you, you don't have a solution? Then get lost. <laughs> you know? I want to ask you, the word solution is wrong. <laughs> okay? If there is a road which is too narrow and there's too much traffic congestion, then the solution would be to widen it, make an overpass, Make a diversion, make an underpass, shoot half the drivers. Those are the solutions. You Correct. got it. But everything in life is not a problem. Is finiteness of death a problem? No, it's, it's death is not a problem. It is an aspect of reality. Is the finiteness of the earth a problem? No, it's not a problem. It is an aspect of reality. You have to deal with it. So are you then saying that civilization is the is the cause of a lot of problems, but it is also the all reality the that we have to... All the problems? All, all the problems. But it is also the reality that we have to live with, and there is nothing that we can do. That is not the, rea the real reality. Yeah. You're living in a made-up reality. You're living in a GDP reality. You're living in a boundary science reality. You're living in a reality where Einstein is supposed to be great. According to me, he's not. <laughs> I used to be in that. How does it matter to me whether he's equal to MC squared? Life worked for 3.6 billion years with us. And what do you mean by E is equal to? There's nothing that can be equal to anything else as I told you. There is no two. Can you show me two of anything? In all of reality. These are concepts. These are symbolic concepts. A is equal to B. How can it be equal? You show me any two things that are equal to apples, to glasses, to people. That is exactly so. You know what's so interesting and what is so frustrating is that civilization is such a self. Uh, I don't know what word to use. Deceiving culture. Okay, that it will say, "Oh, we are such a great culture because we came up with the idea." Of duality. Because we wrote Advait. I said, oh, very good. And what do you do with that knowledge? Nothing. All your science is dualistic. Object, subject. And object and subject in physics, I was taught. Objectivity. You say, be very objective. Oh, Mansoor, your, your opinion on Amir is not correct because you're, you're not being objective. <laughs> I'm saying, how can I be objective? Can a mother be objective about a child? She's connected to the child intimately yes. in a million ways that scientists can't even imagine. How can she be objective? And if she was, she wouldn't understand the child one bit. True. So this is this is the dilemma of separation. It's called separation, boundaries, separation, symbols. It's all interconnected. The moment you create the idea of an imaginary boundary. I love the way they used to teach you in, in, in geometry in school. A point is, uh, a, a dot is a, a point of whatever, uh, you know, of zero dimension. Can you show me anything of zero dimension? <laughs> so it's, a, it's a thought, it's a thought experiment. Mm -hmm. A line is a moving point of zero width. Can you draw <laughs> me a line, zero width? <laughs> you get what I mean? But we swallow it. We say, yeah, but it's a concept. You know, so we say, oh, but why is it, uh, why do we believe in it? Because it gives you power. So symbols give you symbolic science, which helps you control reality. But then reality gives you a kick on the butt. And that's what's <laughs> happening. 
reality is not concerned with your concept. How great you think your physics and uh, um, that, uh, quantum mechanics and quantum... I've done all this. Calculus. I can calculate if I throw a ball at an angle X it, with velocity V in gravity G, it will fall here. Big deal. So, what happens when it falls there on somebody's head? No, that is not part of my equation. You get it? So Absolutely. We say, our, our part of the equation is to make a missile that goes from A to B very predictably at this speed. But what we do with it and what happens is out of the box. And that's why we have this wonderful term called, hey guys, we have to think out of the box. I said, you idiots. There was no box to start with. You put yourself in a box. You said in the box is GDP. GDP should go up. You've created a box. Anything outside that box, I'm not concerned. Rivers dry, forests gone, species extinct. Because it's out of the box. Collateral damage. <laughs> they are wonderful that symbolic thought is amazingly uh, vicious, detrimental, dangerous. And we believe we can understand reality through that. We honestly believe all our science is symbolic. And whatever little experiential science we have, we are either moving it out, uh, sort of uh, denigrating it, like homeopathy and, you know, Ayurveda, or, or corrupting it. So all the people who say, oh, I'm a, uh, you know, um, what's it called, some kind of healer. But this is all bullshitters. <laughs> so you're using, so that's how that gets a bad name. But only civilization does this, you know. No other culture does this. And we have to start understanding what culture means. Culture is your perception. Indigenous cultures do not have to do. We say, oh, you know, Mansoor, the problem is humans are greedy. I tell them, excuse me, show me a tribal that is greedy. Show me if North America, and in North America, we had Mayan civilization and Incas and uh, you know, and, and in Cambodia, we had Angkor Wat. And, but those were civilizations. In America, there were civilizations, the, the idiotic people like us, and then there were tribes. We confused it. We said, oh, what a mind civilization collapsed. I said, yeah, because it was a civilization. And what is a civilization? A culture that does agriculture. Totality. So you violate the, the spiritual truth of reality. You steal food which was meant for others, you steal energy, which was landing on that soil, which was meant for all the creatures on that soil. And from that comes the curse of boundary perception, ownership, price, property, law. You know, it follows. It was lovely talking to you, Mansoor. I am I'm, I'm really happy that I spoke to you after reading your book. Thanks for 